Good evening, everyone. I'm Bandhu Prakurupu, Technical Events Coordinator for Civil Engineering Sectional Committee. So today, the web, Civil Engineering Sectional Committee webinar is about uh, design of post tension moment resistance frames. And our members were much interested about these post tension structures. So we thought of having this session. And the resource persons today are Engineer Malik Mendis and Engineer Asanka Rajlaknath. Engineer Malik Mendis is a structural engineer graduated from University of Moratua, having experience in designing buildings, bridges, and other civil engineering structures in Sri Lanka as well as overseas. He is a director of Nextech Engineering Private Limited and Nashtech Engineering Private Limited India. And Engineer Asanka Laknath is a structural engineer graduated from University of Peradeniya, having experience in designing buildings, bridges, irrigation structures and other civil engineering structures in Sri Lanka as well as overseas. He is also a director of uh, Nextech Engineering Private Limited and Nashtech Engineering Private Limited India. So over to you, Engineer Malik. Yeah, uh, actually, as uh, we, it's uh, brief that our topic in uh, that flyer also, uh, we now, they actually, the post-tension design is a very common thing, but uh, that uh, this type of structure, especially that moment the frame design, most of the engineers having some problems. Actually, most of uh, you also don't much much like to design post-tension moment resistant frames in post-tension because of some uh, uh, problems. The main problem is actually that some uh, they have some bizarre behavior. Uh, second before us. Uh, but uh, actually, we uh, today in presentation we are planning to discuss uh, based on two cases actually um, uh, how we tackle, how handle these problems uh, in that uh, secondary before us and that, uh, that other matters related to post recent structural design of structural frame. Actually, we have a uh, Then first we will discuss what, what is the moment resistance frame need. First, uh, first, uh, first uh, chapter, then first few uh, slides, then what are the functionality of that post tension uh, moment resistance frame. Then we will uh, discuss what are the challenges post tension uh, design post tension moment resistance beam. And uh, 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 how we uh, when we will discuss how we tackle those uh, some of our projects as example. Those are the references basically we used to uh, be referred uh, when we are designing that post tension uh, frame in this project. Actually, that project which we are discussing here actually this one project is in India. India actually we use Indian code, but uh, supporting that Indian code. Uh, some areas we use uh, Eurocode to support that Indian board where we can't find some references in Indian board, then we refer uh, Eurocode. Actually, that Indian codes are much like more like uh, British code, but uh, there are some uh, actually some if, uh, improvements or some addition uh, than the uh, British code, something like. Uh, uh, they are having a good code of uh, ductile detailing of reinforced structures that is uh, 139209093. That is actually good detailing code uh, that there are some guidance to detailing that uh, actually to, uh, to ensure the ductility of the structure. There is actually there, yeah. that, uh, there is another dedicated code for the priestess concrete in Indian court that is 13. 143 uh, 2012. It's also good for simple and uh, that actually having a few numbers of pages also very easy to refer. Then uh, that ISA uh, 1893 and uh, 2016 is the uh, strict resistance structure design code. Actually, this is uh, what we, uh, we can't find the strict resistance code in this code. Then this is also. Uh, good thought to refer actually. I think in Sri Lankan scenario also it's uh, more applicable. Then uh, more than these codes, we used uh, 
designing of post tension structures actually our main guideline is post tension design manual uh, published published by CTI this uh, this based on actually america ati code and international building code but uh, uh, can uh, actually this good guidance uh, to uh, to see that how to design particular elements actually that that so uh, that some public structure so that uh, almost almost uh, all the civil engineering structures covered under this board this uh, guide actually then uh, another good handbook is uh, post tension uh, concrete uh, flow design handbook a tr43 this is particularly for the lab actually but we can uh, take certain uh, references from this board also something about uh, lightly post tension structures uh, most is actually that like structures uh, a tr43 is for your euro board then i will go to the rest of our presentation yeah uh, then uh, here i would like to discuss what is the moment resistance frame actually i think most of you uh, know that actually we have that moment resistance frame used to resist the lateral load uh, lateral load uh, actually that you can uh, there are three type of uh, things you can use to resist the lateral load one is the uh, moment resistance frame other one is shear wall structure other one is raised uh, that uh, raised frame structures like that like what i shown in that uh, then uh, that basically lateral load uh, which we have to encounter or we have to resist by the uh, force uh, that uh, structures are lateral uh, in load and then other notional load uh, and systemic load and some other accidental load uh, which may uh, happen in the operation of the building then uh, then next the moment resistance we will uh, now discuss uh, about moment resistance frame moment resistance frame should have rigid connection between each of the uh, members actually those members those uh, connections actually column beam connection shall ensure that it uh, has rigid connection uh, we have to specially design those connections i will explain in presentation post tension um, uh, is actually viable to use uh, that uh, moment resistance frame which is having large band mostly more than 12 meter band actually it is viable uh, there are several factors actually there are several factors consider when we have we have to consider when we are designing post tension uh, post tension moment resistance frame and this presentation we will discuss about that actually this is uh, our first project which we are going to discuss so that we can some photograph this is actually multi modal transport hub Uh, in Chennai is actually uh, in uh, Chennai city that is the uh, it, it will connect that underground uh, transport MRT network uh, uh, to railway network and the buses then that uh, public uh, private cars uh, and car parks and like the structure that all transport facilities they are going to link up in one centre. I will show you some video. In this project actually our challenge our challenge is uh, was uh, we have to design about 25 to 35 meters spanning beam because there is some uh, stone in the uh, premises which we can't do the piling because of that underground MRT system running uh, underground uh, under the site so therefore actually that that area we have to we can't do any piling then we have to uh, then we have to span uh, that area. is around uh, 25 to 35 meters span uh, then uh, then i also uh, briefly explain uh, that small project we did in kalambu and that project also we had some uh, post uh, the post tension frame but uh, in the in, uh, that uh, frame we actually uh, omitted or we actually reduced that uh, effect of uh, 
force tensioning into the frame uh, by some construction, uh, some uh, some uh, some constructed shape get uh, while the constructing. I will explain that. Uh, this is uh, actually how to mitigate that uh, effects of uh, force tension into the frame. Okay, two. Actually, first I will. Uh, I will little explain that uh, what is uh, what is the scope in that uh, uh, NI project. Uh, I think you can see that, no? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we can see that. This is the, the that uh, project we are doing in Chennai. This is the uh, that uh, area. Actually, this uh, that uh, the railway line goes to this. Uh, uh, the structure is the railway station. This red color one is that uh, existing railway station. This is actually historical building, very large building. Uh, then uh, that uh, we have to preserve that building, and uh, that new station building comes uh, covering that. Actually, in that day, that uh, that that box type structures, these uh, structures are actually car parking. Private people can park their car and use the public transport uh, uh, by train or either. That some uh, underground MRT uh, uh, line going under this area. Actually, this uh, the, the area uh, the, that uh, no piling is on. We can't do piling because of the, the underground uh, MRT uh, line. Most of the structures you can see that large stand we need that well. That is why most of the structures were post tension. But our scope of this project is actually doing the post tension structures. Uh, that other the rest of foundation structures and that column uh, uh, structures seen by another Indian uh, that actually the contractor himself a post tension uh, thing they need. Specialized Actually, this looks like too much sophisticated, but that is the uh, standard now. Actually, that Indian following. This is also almost there. Yeah, some stations they have developed uh, to that level. Yeah. 
that MLCT means multilevel car park. Try to do multilevel car park. Okay, so <laughs> then you can see uh, what is secondary forces are. Actually, uh, I will not go into that detail uh, explanation of how to design uh, pre stress structures, post tension structures. Actually, if you have time later day, we will have another session to uh, explain that how to design post tension structures from the from the start actually beginning. Uh, that I will assume that you are having some experience in designing post tension structures. I will continue uh, to that uh, problems we are encountering in uh, designing uh, moment resistant frames like, like this. Actually, that secondary forces are the main challenge. Uh, that secondary forces happen due to the uh, uh, pre uh, that formation of structures due to pre stress forces. Because of pre-stressing, pre-stressing that the structure deform, that uh, to uh, to resist that deform structure, that column thickness and other restrain uh, thicknesses uh, restrain that uh, movement before deformation of structure. Uh, because of that um, restraining, that secondary moment happens. So actually, this secondary moment distributes throughout the structure. It is very bizarre. Actually, uh, uh, not favorable uh, then uh, actually uh, in uh, normal structures we try our best to mitigate that and reduce that effect of force tension secondary force here you can see that the uh, force tension beam actually uh, that ends also uh, you can see that force tension the pt duct is about the center of gravity because of that actually uh, hogging moment uh, occur at the support uh, because of that hogging moment that uh, can be in this presentation that that column actually uh, that uh, because of that hogging moment that column try to bend uh, that column try to resist that deformation then uh, that some moment transfer to the column and uh, moment transfer to the column. it is a secondary beam that uh, option one as I explained we will reduce we will try to reduce that set of secondary uh, forces but that option two is actually we have designed for that secondary force. That um, uh, these two projects we did for. Then uh, this diagram actually you can see that uh, the first diagram is uh, preliminary uh, primary action uh, on structure due to free space. So you can see that uh, that uh, lowest floor, that uh, first floor level, we have more primary free space in force. Because actually we add more force tensioning uh, to the uh, first floor because actually we are experiencing much loss of uh, force tension uh, while stressing that upper floor, first floor level. To to uh, to counter that, actually we have to provide additional uh, pre stressing tendons in uh, the first floor level. That second uh, mm -hmm. diagram shows that second uh, uh, secondary action uh, on pre stress structure actually this, you can see that uh, you need almost uniform force act on the beams as a secondary force and because of that uh, that uh, resistance of that uh, support to the that hogging uh, moment uh, hogging moment actually that that resistive moment distributes to the beam uniformly then uh, that uh, moment actually uh, that it, uh, it transfer to the column like this, actually, column also experiencing uh, bending moment, and we have designed that column also for that bending. Uh, then, firstly, we will see how we are going to mitigate that effect of secondary action. The first uh, one is actually as per the uh, PT, uh, PTI that 
uh, yeah, recommendation and also also that uh, TR forty three recommendation actually they said that if peak uh, compression of structure is below two, we can take that secondary effect. Peak compression means that post tension force divided by the area. That the that peak compression is uh, below that below two. We can neglect that effect of uh, pre, uh, 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 that uh, secondary force. That that is why most of the structures um, uh, we are trying to uh, reduce that uh, or control that peak compression up to uh, uh, one one to two level actually. And most of the slab post tension simple slab and all we are using a uh, peak compression below uh, between uh, one and two. Then uh, we don't need to consider that uh, effect uh, to the structure. Then second uh, thing is uh, we uh, we keep that structure mostly uh, simply support. Actually, I uh, I uh, mention uh, here as we will keep the structure statically determinant. Actually, structure is statically determinant. We don't need to consider the second reaction. Structure Determinant means uh, actually simply support uh, like structure, you know. Then, uh, then uh, that bridge design we use that trick actually. Uh, we design structure bridge structures uh, apparently uh, continuous. Otherwise, uh, if we span, we need to have some expansion joint or something. We put that uh, link slab like a very small uh, thin slab connecting actually with small stiffness connecting. Uh, Span, but uh, structurally that uh, we, we can neglect that uh, small step folding step and structurally that is simply supported the simple uh, span structure uh, uh, like that actually we can uh, uh, mitigate that we can neglect that uh, second reaction uh, by this method also and there is uh, sometimes actually we change our construction sequence and we had some uh, intermediate uh, construction stages which allows structures to deform in pressing state. Uh, that is one trick actually we are using that then uh, structure don't have any secondary forces. Structure is simply supported for the pressing stage. But uh, after constructing, we, uh, we convert that the uh, connections to fixed connection. Then uh, structure become uh, continuous structure for the live load. This is another method we are we used to mitigate the effects of second reaction. Then, uh, then actually we, have, uh, in, uh, we have to consider another major problem of that post tensioning is the, uh, that uh, post tensioning frame then I uh, is uh, it produced actually the activity of the structure. Uh, what is the effect of post tensioning to the seismic resistance? Of the or ductility of the structure. Actually, ductility you know, as according to Indian standard, we have to uh, withstand at least seven, uh, 25 percent of lateral loads by uh, moment resistant frame. If that our structure is having shear walls and both shear walls and moment uh, lateral load resistant frame, at least 25 percent of lateral loads to be uh, taken by that uh, moment resistant frame. Uh, in that scenario, actually, we have to uh, uh, provide uh, fixed frames in any all the structures. Actually, we can't keep uh, put shear walls and keep other all uh, even pin connected. It's not possible according to the uh, Indian standard. Uh, then, uh, what is the effect of uh, then? Actually, the other thing we have to uh, ensure that uh, beam is weak and column is strong. I think in uh, Laknath will explain that elaborately thing how how we have how we are going to handle the uh, this uh, that uh, weak beam and column uh, strong column uh, requirement. Actually, then uh, that this particular project uh, this is uh, reviewed by Indian uh, uh, ITI actually they are one of their from uh, university. Then they have uh, they uh, have. Uh, standardized this thing actually they they ask us to keep uh, column is much cheaper 1.5 stiffer than the beam actually this is uh, this also we have to ensure we have to show them that we are achieving this 
by actually uh, lag, lagnath will explain that how we are going to do this then uh, then uh, another important thing actually that what is the that effect of force tensioning to the that, uh, that tensioning performance of the building uh, that uh, when we are using post tension overall weight of the building will be reduced that's actually beneficial uh, in uh, uh, seismic act, uh, aspect uh, then another uh, thing is uh, uh, that uh, it re reduce but uh, actually uh, uh, is uh, that concrete area of the uh, section will reduce uh, by introducing uh, that post tensioning because of that concrete area is reduced that uh, you know that uh, concrete uh, that compressive uh, is more towards to compressive failure if compressive failure happens actually structure become brittle then we have to avoid that we have to uh, we have to uh, closely monitor that situation uh, we, we we can't allow that concrete to uh, fail uh, and happen that brittle failure to the structure then uh, then why that is why we are that much consider concern uh, that much concerned about uh, that ductility of structure uh, when, uh, when we are using post tension. This is the Kinsey Road project. Actually, uh, here we are uh, we mitigate the effect of post tensioning by providing uh, actually this project that pre is uh, that pre this project uh, we have. 12 meter, uh, about 12 meter length of uh, heavily loaded beam. Uh, actually, that beam depth we have to control to satisfy the architectural requirements. As I remember, it was 100 meter or something. Then uh, that uh, total rip slab was supported on this beam. Then, uh, uh, then we have to definitely go for post tensioning. But that, uh, as uh, I saw in this case, actually this beam is connected to the shear wall that actually shear wall in this, this direction is very stiff element then uh, actually because uh, actually i mean if we are monolithically cast that entire thing and we stress the beam that uh, most of the pre-stress force will lost by this um, stiffness of this uh, <coughs> taken by the stiffness of this uh, shear wall and uh, uh, actually, we will uh, uh, this uh, it, it uh, <coughs> actually lost their secondary for secondary action, uh, and uh, we will do, do cost of the post tensioning. Then actually, here what we did is uh, we allow that uh, structure to move uh, while post uh, while pre stressing. We allow that structure to move. Actually, in reinforcement, we uh, put some conduit and. Uh, uh, through this connection and that uh, the support also we put some uh, layer that with uh, foam layer then we allow this uh, beam to move beam to move while stressing then after stressing uh, we will we uh, fill that uh, conduit with uh, ground and uh, we uh, convert this connection to fixed connection after stressing then uh, this can uh, this uh, this frame is only Continuous frame for live load and uh, live load only for dead load and post tension in load. This uh, connection uh, <coughs> at their thin connection. Uh, this is the drawing action. This is how we have put that conduit to the connection. This the uh, uh, bonding layer we put between the structure beam and uh, column. <coughs> we actually we did another thing at the ice. Two uh, that long one shear wall. We separate this shear wall to two actually. Then by this, uh, there then uh, by this also we reduce the stiffness of shear wall into that direction. This is the Chennai project. Uh, Chennai project actually we uh, we can't do such thing because that frame should, as I explained, frame should. Resist the uh, seismic forces and uh, frame should resist the uh, moment. Therefore, that actually we have to design that uh, frames for that uh, secondary. Then uh, what we did is uh, we have to do the uh, construction stage analysis. Construction stage analysis means that 
uh, <laughs> we, we do the model entire thing linearly elastically and model uh, analyze actually uh, it assume that everything uh, everything analyzed as a one uh, all elements have analyzed as a one uh, structure but construction stage analysis we separate it to several structures several levels each of these level we will apply pre stressing forces and we are uh, and we allow all the deformation and we model the next level and then we allow uh, do the phase stressing and then load the also now then we are going to next step like that step by step and this within the step is act as linear elastic because actually there's a long span structures uh, we don't need to think about that um, other effect the effect and all uh, that next is the dominant then uh, like that we within that uh, and uh, within that step it is linear elastic but after linear elastic analysis it was uh, uh, we did uh, that step by step analysis it's called construction stage analysis actually we have to use midas the midas civil is very strong in this construction stage analysis then uh, all the pre stress losses uh, we, uh, we occurred in uh, while stressing upper floors to the lower floor is uh, accounted in, uh, by this method of analysis then here you can see that uh, this is the preliminary moment this is the secondary moment actually that uh, quite high secondary moment uh, happens in uh, lower floor because of the avenue has been in that upper floor that uh, this uh, that uh, secondary force will transfer to second losses happen to this lower floors that uh, so there is some building moment to columns also due to that the pre stress actually then another thing we here i have mentioned what is that creep actually creep uh, you we know that creep is a imaginary force actually not the primary creep is the imaginary force so we consider that uh, that uh, sorting of structure uh, they i uh, we assume that imaginary force uh, they i imaginary force tend to sort in the structure or primary creep then we don't need to consider that primary uh, creep in any of our uh design because actually the primary creep uh, we, uh, we are not specific primary creep but uh, because of this primary creep force uh, uh, that uh, shrinkage uh, that secondary effects happen to the other structural element creep and shrinkage both we have to uh, consider that that the secondary force also when we are designing uh, the structure but it is considerably uh, not that high uh, that that large force con comparative to the other load but uh, that we use type of uh, construction stage analysis it also count to our final force here yeah, another challenge actually that uh, then our next challenge is actually we have to keep that connection uh, Uh, they ensure that connection is <coughs> fixed <coughs> actually we, we are getting that uh, bending moment we have defined that uh, connection to this uh, moment uh, that is moment as a fixed connection but if we are, if we put that anchorage in this connection it definitely this uh, zone will damage means actually d zone d zone is damage zone of Uh, ductile zone, B zone is Bernoulli or beam zone that uh, that intact intact as in, uh, long beam, but that uh, Bernoulli beam. But the B zone is uh, the actual ductile zone, intact as ductile zone, and then we have to think of uh, differently about the connectivity of connectivity uh, of this connection. We here we what we did is we extend that uh, <coughs> up to. Away from this connection, next uh, to keep that anchor region, then uh, we shift that uh, D zone from away from the uh, this connection. <coughs> this connection actually is very advisable to design that connection using uh, fast and time method because actually there uh, that uh, connection uh, we can't assume that connection as a then uh, beam. Therefore, it is more advisable to design that uh, connection uh, following the uh, fast and time model 
you can refer that you know about uh, how to time test first and type. Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> there, there is uh, one area we use for bureau code when we are designing uh, that structure to the Indian code, like Indian code. So, uh, I have not seen any code which giving me a lot of any guidance to uh, design fast and time method. <laughs> Otherwise, the bureau code then uh, we follow this code uh, for that fast and time only. Then uh, to confirm that fast and time behavior, actually we did call uh, analysis uh, applying that uh, pre setting force that how that uh, uh, structure, how that the connection here when we apply uh, pre setting uh, force and this uh, that uh, structure in moment. This is one example actually we don't detail uh, that connection properly uh, actually this connection may fail. There is some guidance of uh, how to uh, connect actually this uh, uh, we can uh, follow that uh, minimum energy uh, uh, rule uh, to minimum internal work rule to uh, where that process we have to uh, process and type yeah, arrange you can prefer that code actually. Actually, as I earlier, uh, I, in, uh, as I told, actually in uh, systemic aspects, there are some benefits of using force tension. Uh, as I explained, one needs to uh, reduce overall weight of structure. Then uh, another one needs uh, actually a code says if you use unbonded tendons, uh, that uh, structure come to its original position, actually, means that it's plastic. Uh, that, that use the post tension uh, columns and wall structure comes with it after experience or so after specific situation it comes to the original person but this is actually very negligible we have tried this we have modeled this uh, especially this scenario but uh, in our experience it's very negligible but uh, as you all know that uh, post tension that cracks are very less because of uh, because we minimize the cracking actually that elasticity of structure improve. Uh, the, because of that reason actually uh, we can consider that uh, comes to original position because of uh, we are reducing crack. How comes that uh, how to how we improve the how uh, that assessment of ductility after the post tensioning Mr. Ratnath will explain you uh, further. Yes, Mr. Laknath, you can take up you can transfer to Lakhnath, I think, that screen sharing facility, you know? Okay, oh, okay. Okay, okay, sure. I will stop sharing. Okay. okay. I think it is okay now, no? You can see. Uh, yeah, we can see, uh, but I, yeah, I think some uh, other windows are on the screen. We are having some covered areas. Bill. Feel some uh... is it okay now? Um, yeah, now it is okay. Right, thank it's you very much. Writing. Yeah, in the top there's a still a line. Uh, I think some warnings so or some uh, oh, that is the uh, control bar. Uh, okay. Uh, can you move it to uh, some position? I oh, know in, uh, in the topmost. Uh,
is it okay now i think it moves to down ah now now okay now okay okay thank you very much uh, moving from this detailed presentation uh, and discussion about the design of post tension uh, moment frame resistant building uh, structure from malit uh, i would like to draw your attention regarding the requirement we had uh, we uh, we had for the uh, chennai railway station and transport hub project that is the seismic consideration uh, uh, given uh, by the client so uh, as per the project we have to provide ductile design that uh, the, our design after the post tension work should be structure should be ductile and the detail should be done as per is 13920 So I guess thirty nine twenty twenty describe uh, and give some detailing as uh, Malit explained in previous uh, slides uh, the detailing uh, rules and some uh, guidance. So uh, as Malit explained, this after post tensioning there may be a tendency to lose the ductility of the structure. So even after the post tensioning. therefore we have to ensure the formation of ductile hinges at appropriate locations in the event of an earthquake uh, and the structure need to perform as ductile structure after adding post tension loads so mean uh, with this uh, earthquake load the hinge formation should be ductile and the structure need to perform as ductile structure so uh, in order to find out and uh, show our structure are ductile the procedure we followed is as follows we found out the displacement demand of the frame structure to the response spectrum given in is 1893 that is we applied a uh, response spectrum uh, response spectrum to the structure and evaluate the displacement demand of the structure this uh, we use response spectrum uh, response spectrum given in is 1893 indian code so by after put uh, performing displacement uh, demand analysis by uh, response spectrum analysis we perform the push show analysis to find out the capacity curve that means we we that means we apply can you shift to other other uh, can you you can uh, turn that uh, in also no you can oh, okay fine 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 yeah you are you are that side only no you are not saying okay. okay okay then uh, fine, fine. so the when we uh, need to uh, when we need to observe the behavior of the structure we have to add, uh, add hinges so we use ac hinges uh, before uh, performing the push show analysis and uh, by doing the analysis uh, with the uh, outcome we could confirm the strong column weak beam scenario up, which is appropriate ductile so by doing this one we confirm the frame has an appropriate level of safety this diagram uh, this diagram is shows the seismic zone zonation of the india uh, given in this ninth uh, indian courts so we will move this is the uh, uh, aerial view of the sites as shown in malit and uh, you can see this red uh, note which is uh, the location of igmo uh, chennai railway station so so uh, we talk about uh, the requirement to ensure the formation of ductile hinges at appropriate location in the event of an earthquake what is ductility ductility of structure or its member is the capacity to undergo large inelastic deformation without significant loss of strength or stiffness that by uh, looking at this uh, strain versus uh, stress curve we can see this uh, curved area which shows the start of yield and it shows the ultimate uh, stress uh, up to this yield uh, start in yield the energy absorption uh, below the this, this mean uh, energy energy absorption we can find out from this curve below the area of this curve so it is small and after forming this yield in it uh, without losing the stress change it much it uh, strain uh, a considerable amount and 
with this area we can see this absorb a bit of large uh, energy for the hinges if i elaborate little bit uh, by this diagram this is deformation was deformation was a uh, force diagram this ex, uh, explain the initial linear stage of the hinge and first steel point start here and uh, with the strain hardening this uh, go almost horizontal up to the ductile limit and uh, then after that it start to lose the strength and uh, the, after this point it it is going to complete failure or the collapse so this was uh, performance based uh, uh, that is that is the definition and uh, the property of this hinge but we expect so uh, ductility of frame little bit uh, elaborating the ductility of moment frames is very important actually uh, why uh, and we have to allow plastic hinges to be formed at appropriate locations uh, that as discussed uh, earlier we uh, discussed uh, about the formation of plastic hinge we can see in the first diagram that is the frame and this is the part of frame which shows the hinge location this first uh, diagram shows the favorable location of hinges in a frame because this hinge forms between uh, column that is uh, actually between column that is in on the beams that is better and uh, this location is better at visible uh, this formation of hinges and beams is better at visible and repairable locations so uh, the second uh, important thing is allow plastic hinges to be initialized at com comparatively non critical members that means if we consider structure with column and beam we can see if the column is uh, weak and uh, if the hinge form on columns the possibility of collapse of the structure is obvious so we prefer be uh, to have hinges on beams rather than columns plastic hinges to be an appropriate uh, to be in appropriate state when dis displacement demand of the design seismic load meet that means the hinge should be in appropriate state that means the hinge may the, the hinge form and it may be in a uh, favorable uh, condition absorbing energy or it may be under uh, losing the strength or it may be collapsing so even uh, with our ductile frame under the seismic force or seismic uh, load this plastic hinge should be in appropriate state we can see this one uh, in the next slide but we expect this one so uh, this is also um, a little bit about this weak uh, beam strong column scenario the indian standards recommends to be uh, have column stiffness greater than beam stiffness again to uh, facilitate the expected ductile uh, behavior of beam and uh, to have hinges on sorry uh, on a strong uh, column and uh, to have uh, hinges on beam you, we can see this is the first one is uh, stiffness of column and beam seems to be uh, similar the second one stiffness of column uh, seems to be higher which has uh, deform we can see the deformation of the beam uh, shapes of the deformation and the uh, third one uh, says so uh, we can see the beams are stiffer and the columns uh, shape of the deformation of column which will which is not favorable so this strong column weak beam scenario we have to satisfy under the guidance of indian standard for uh, designs so uh, scwb that is strong column weak beam uh, ensure the formation of plastic hinges at beams before columns so that is our requirement to show uh, the hinges are formed on beam with our post tension structure this was actually uh, this is special concern of post tension moment frames was explained by malit uh, and uh, so i i can omit this one that that says actually seismic response uh, when it reduced the, uh, so with the application of post tension 
we can uh, reduce the structure weight so it will reduce the seismic response as explained in Mali. And uh, that is uh, in the view of ductility, reduction of size of the members will reduce the ductility, which uh, in the meantime, which uh, help to reduce the ductility of structure, which is not favorable. So this is uh, explained by Malit. So I will omit this one. And uh, this is step we uh, do to obtain displacement demand. That is uh, actually our first step is to apply seismic load or the seismic uh, force on the structure and find what is the seismic uh, demand of the structure that we are doing this one in the base of displacement because this is uh, we can get easily displacement based analysis by doing the uh, response spectrum analysis we find uh, what is the displacement we structure uh, undergoes when this seismic uh, uh, response spectrum is applied so we can uh, you can see that this is our structure the frame was taken from the 3d model and this is uh, analyzed uh, uh, model as a 2D frame. This has uh, beams and column at 20 meter in uh, span. So uh, this is the Indian uh, response spectrum uh, mentioned in 18, 1893, the 1893 called Indian standard. So we applied this response spectrum uh, force to the structure and found this our deformation or the displacement of this top node is uh, 49.1 millimeter. So this is the displacement demand. That means when it, the structure undergoes uh, seismic force, it will uh, move or displace by 49.1 uh, millimeter, approximately 50 millimeter. So uh, the next, our task is to find when it moves or this uh, display uh, when it deformed by this uh, 50 millimeter what will be the actual behavior of structure for this one we have to uh, do for form we have to perform push show analysis uh, to find out the display uh, to find out the behavior of structure the formation of hinges and where it will be formed so uh, we have to apply uh, push over load uh, by passing the response spectrum response spectrum displacement value this is we have to apply more than 50 millimeter displacement value uh, as uh, displacement so uh, before we, we model the structure the model the frame and after that we have to uh, we have to include the hinges to the model you can see these uh, hinges are uh, given at the top and uh, bottom of the columns as well as this is uh, not a little bit clear he, this area we have uh, we have hinge hinge we have hinges hinge properties given for the beams that is actually we are giving the location for hinge and hinge, hinges are not activated until it is run and do the step-by-step -step analysis of uh, applying loads. So assign hinges as per expected location. Monitor the location initi uh, initi to initiate the hinges. No, monitor the location, no, initiate the hinge. So after applying uh, pushover loads or running the pushover analysis, we can uh, see how the hinges occur in this frame, whether it is on beam or it is on column. So we find out the status of hinge when it meets the displacement demand. So when it is uh, at 50 millimeter, we can find the, whether this hinge is in uh, favorable uh, condition or not. But you can see this uh, hinge properties are given uh, given with this uh, graph like this. So this is the behavior that uh, from starting the deformation versus force diagram. This approximately shows the hinge behavior applied for this one this is starting from zero it goes elastically up to b uh, and uh, this is yielding in start after that it goes up to ductile limit it is a c and uh, after that is uh, the hinge goes the strength and it at e it start to collapse 
So between this B and C, you can see there are some notations IO, LS, and CP. IO is uh, under the performance based design. Uh, this uh, region, uh, uh, they have identified this uh, IO is immediate occupancy level. That means the structure is safe as an immediate occupancy. That means after this level of earth. Uh, behavior or displacement happen, it may uh, return to uh, closer to the initial stage and the structure is called uh, immediate at uh, immediate occupancy level. The uh, At the mid of this ductile uh, range, it is uh, the second one you see is uh, LS, that is life safety. Life safety means the structure goes to ultimate level and after this uh, near to C, it is CP mentioned. Collapse, collapse prevention. That means that is uh, near to the collapse. So after that one is uh, uh, the hinge or the structure lose its, its uh, strength and it start to collapse. So uh, we can see uh, with this analysis of uh, pushover, we can see uh, the hinge is in which region. That means uh, immediate occupancy level low, life safety level low, collapse prevention level. So uh, we apply the push uh, loads and uh, observe the behavior of displacement of frame. So this is step one deformation we could uh, got from the push analysis. We can see if we can uh, see here this is 39.7 that is 40 millimeter displacement at step one. So uh, with this step one, 49, uh, 40 millimeter displacement, we can see the hinges have been formed. This is activated pink color hinge. So we can see this pink color hinge on the beam. So we are sure that is happening on the beam, that is occurring on the beam. Columns have no uh, indication of formation of hinges. So uh, this uh, color uh, uh, spectrum shows this, uh, the B here see uh, here and uh, in between this one in uh, immediate of occupancy level life safety color experience and after that up to failure so uh, the second step uh, of the push show analysis we can see this at the second step we can see it is around 60 millimeter displacement we can observe and the structure beam it has pink uh, pink color hinge which means that is between uh, that is uh, immediate occupancy level. That means the structure is safe with minor damage, like a brittle uh, structure, brittle glasses or something may be damaged. So we can see this uh, at uh, when uh, that means uh, for uh, fifty millimeter was our displacement demand. That is when we apply response spectrum that. To represent the earthquake force, it uh, the structure move uh, 50 millimeter. Now, by push analysis, in the left side we are we have the displacement of 40 millimeter, and right side we have 60 millimeter displacement. With this both uh, scenarios, the hinge are pink, which means it, it is at immediate occupancy level. So hinges are initiated in the beam. Hinges are at the immediate occupancy stage after yielding due to design seismic action. So uh, actually this collapse start, started after moving uh, 320 millimeter displacement. Uh, that figure was not uh, mentioned. That is same as this one, uh, but uh, it start on beam, but uh, at 328 millimeter displacement. That is uh, very uh, larger than the seismic uh, demand of the frame. So with uh, this one, uh, we could conclude to the main uh, consultant that our structure is safer for seismic force and it is in the ductile region. It is uh, with the heavy post tension loads, the behavior has not been changed because the court, Indian Standard Court, uh, says the structure should behave as ductile structure. 
So with this one, we could uh, uh, complete the seismic uh, design part by showing our structure is safer. So I think, uh, yeah, that is uh, all. And uh, thank you very much for. If you can go for any question, you can answer. Uh, one. Uh, yes. Uh, now uh, participants can unmute themselves and can ask questions or they can direct their questions to the chat box as well. May I ask a question? Yes, please. Ah, okay. Uh, this is regarding the uh, performance based design here. Uh, 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 did you uh, find any uh, like uh, uh, joint with uh, life safety or collapse prevention level hinges? Uh, and also, uh, if if you found those, uh, what what uh, what you did for rectification uh, rectification means improving the reinforcement or pre-stress trend pre-stress trend, strand. strand. Uh, the, uh, the ductility moment capacity movement with the reinforcement yeah actually yeah you okay uh, yeah, the, the, the actually uh, collapse prevention uh, start that I mentioned, collapse prevention start at around 300, uh, that is 0.3 meter displacement level. So, uh, but it is uh, compared with the displacement uh, demand of the structure for the uh, seismic forces, uh, this collapse uh, starting point is very higher displacement. So, uh, this is... Uh, the, it happens if we push the structure or if we uh, the seismic uh, response spectrum or the seismic force is very higher than the seismic uh, force that is uh, recommended by the Indian standard. In this project, so actually, it is within the limit, but if we, as you asked, if we exceed the limit, uh, what we have to do is we have to change the stiffness of structure. Actually, uh, uh, adding more uh, reinforcement and that more force tensioning will not work in this scenario because actually uh, that uh, uh, that uh, that structure's stiffness will increase by that by adding more force tension and more reinforcement. Then more adversable thing is into increase in the section size, that concrete size, uh, and then uh, we can manage with that actually. Sometimes it's that if it is happening in columns, uh, uh, actually that uh, is not that uh, bad. But if it is happening in columns, uh, columns definitely we have to increase the column sizes. Uh, our advice is uh, in such scenario uh, to increase the column uh, section size actually, not increase in the post section. Any more questions? Yeah, re regarding the uh, previous question, that means for the uh, target displacement, all the uh, in, uh, hinges were at immediate occupancy level, you mean? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, can we see a detailing uh, at the uh, moment resisting joint uh, because uh, you mentioned that uh, for in application of the post tensioning, the the beam uh, end was released. Like after that, uh, some reinforcement was introduced. It is not that clear the detailing. If you have any detail uh, at the yeah. junction, very important, I think. Yeah. Actually, Actually, if you can in, uh, have any uh, thing, we can share that from uh, some of our drawings or sketches. Ah. No, not, not. Mm -hmm. and right. point of view, I don't have actually. Okay, okay it's not that uh, clear. Drawing. Actually, we have we are detailed that uh, uh, as fixed connection. 
this is basically according to that uh, that I saw that one Indian standard is there, but the detailing uh, that we can show. Yeah, I'm not sure to share later the details, actually, so drawing or you know, some sketches or some presentation or something. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a WhatsApp group for our uh, civil engineering section committee webinars. I will huh. put the link in the chat box. Then everyone interested oh. ones, uh, participants can join there. We will share those all informations in that group. Yeah, yeah. By tomorrow, I will share that actually. Some uh, yeah. yeah. That. Other thing is, as I know, to define this uh, the immediate. Uh, hinge capacities we can consider only the reinforcement uh, amount of reinforcement only to define the hinge uh, capacity or the deformation graph but in the in case of uh, pre-stressing inside mm -hmm. i think that hinge uh, deformation graph will be totally different i think uh, it is not that simple i think yeah. i don't i'm sure whether we can use the same uh, Deform same uh, graph deformation versus the force graph uh, in case uh, in the presence of pre stressing. Yes. Actually, yes, actually, what you told is oh yeah, correct. Uh, in this uh, actually this software is actually we have there are uh, the research level development also in that uh, how to how to change how to that change that uh, hinge behavior when uh, post tension is added. But mostly in this structure, we had post tension as a force, not the, uh, not not tendon actually. Uh, then that uh, we are not uh, as actually this force is beneficial force. Keep that section in compression. When we uh, applying uh, that uh, bending moment, actually this compression area, uh, small uh, 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 are are changing into the tension tensile area. That is the way that things behave. So that actually we have in this analysis we have separately considered that things uh, that force tension uh, as a, a force only. As uh, you told, actually they are actually we are uh, that uh, we are uh, tension in that force tension up to 75 percent of its collapse its ultimate load. Uh, then actually there is another 25 percent to yield. Actually, that uh, behavior with that yielding, as you told, it will be quite different. But uh, for this analysis, actually, we have restricted up to that level. Uh, as you told, actually, uh, as my knowledge, most of the, these uh, post tension hinges are in uh, uh, that research level, actually. And not the final, uh, some software may, uh, some software yes, may yes, allow software that. We can't consider any post tensioning effect in uh, ductile dangers. No, they, uh, that is uh, the what. Yes, yes, that when we are defining hinge, we don't consider any post tensioning effect. Actually, SAP don't have that present. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And there, are, there are, there's a question in the chat box. Uh, how do you define nonlinear material properties for the post tensioning section? As per my under understanding, general reinforcement concrete nonlinear models does not follow this scenario. Mm, yes, actually, then uh, this uh, uh, this hinges. I think you mean that hinges. We are putting some. We are considering that non. Linear, uh, uh, linear uh, deformation because actually this uh, uh, connections uh, uh, mostly the structures are that uh, long members. Then uh, this uh, the, the linear elastic analysis is I think limited for this particular thing. If we, uh, there is other problem actually, we are uh, putting uh, that hinges at particular selected location. That's actually lump stiffness method, but uh, then we have to go to uh, distribute, uh, distribute uh, stiffness method. Uh, otherwise, it's a bit complicated analysis. I think Laknath can explain that. No, there is a linear analysis. How? Yeah, actually, uh, once you did one uh, one project, uh, that actually this uh, the, with this uh, limitations of the software, we cannot uh, do this. Uh, 
under this uh, linear elastic uh, analysis but with the open uh, like uh, modeling uh, we can do the we can give the fiber we can uh, divide this sections to fibers and give the nonlinear curves for this one and after this one only uh, we can do this nonlinear analysis for this uh, hinges but with this uh, commercial software uh, there are some limitations and the second question of him was uh, how do you identify the hinge locations for the beams Hinge, uh, hinge location is also actually uh, that lump stiffness method no lack that you can explain yes. that yeah. Yeah. yeah that one actually uh, as uh, as uh, professor kusan says uh, to find the answer we have uh, to find the answer we have to know the answer like this actually uh, this formation of uh, hinge location that we are only giving the uh, hinge locations but hinges are not activated that we are we are given the hinge property to this uh, kind of, uh, beams and columns once the load is applied uh, only this hinge is activated so uh, with the uh, basic knowledge of uh, hinge formation we know this uh, where uh, where would be the hinge location so for these locations we are given the hinge properties uh, it is we have with this uh, limitations of the software we have to do uh, in this manner or otherwise if we go for research something like open sys modeling uh, uh, we are not given any uh, location uh, for the hinge instead we uh, analyze and get the moment curvature output from this uh, nonlinear structures and uh, plot the graph and find the find uh, from these graphs where hinges are forming so uh, this one we uh, give the locations on beams where possible uh, for the locations where possible hinges to be performed possible locations for the hinges to be performed well, this is uh, that uh, most of the cases uh, the analysis is not the fire uh, that that much accurate analysis but actually we are, we are assigning hinge locations we are pre assigning hinge locations if you use the open piece or something you can uh, assign that you can uh, assign a few more locations that in just in more locations no luck not that is yeah that actually the actually research level research level it is okay but commercial levels i don't we have not never used those uh, software as in commercial level first and in course that, they... that uh, some rich design very critical uh, things once you apply it, I think that matter, but uh, normally we are not using for building like structures, which is having more redundant, more safety factors than this structure. This structure is with less redundancy, they very much tend to collapse the event of a stick knife event. Then uh, we are it's advisable to go for that much uh, serious and that much of uh, complicated analysis. And a codes uh, in a, like a code like ACI, they are uh, saying uh, what should be the uh, hinge length and uh, hinge location. But in sub two thousand like software, we can uh, we are we cannot give this hinge length and this uh, sort of sophisticated thing. Uh, in uh, ACI code and other codes, if we follow, uh, we can find some more detail where uh, the location, the length, and uh, uh, minimum distance to hinge. This is given in this uh, American codes and other some other codes. Okay, uh, there's one last question. Uh, are there any infill materials in between the frames? If any infills, how did you take the stiffness of infill materials? Uh, this project actually we don't we didn't have any gold or something. Uh, but uh, if you're having infill material, actually, my advice is if it is masonry wall or something, you will neglect that uh, effect. Actually, that thickness of masonry uh, wall is actually that that uh, telling you that column is normally about uh, nearly about one thousand two hundred millimeter. Yeah, thousand two hundred. Then actually, if you are having even you are having 
small ball which means between that very that that of that ball we can play in field concrete ball is different scenario then you have to analyze it as a ball uh, that that one also but uh, in field uh, other in field material actually we have to take i think that the people to take we can add some bracings okay. if we need to uh, analyze this yeah bracing is <laughs> different scenario yeah okay uh, i think there are no more questions and actually it was a really interesting session and i would like to invite uh, chairman civil engineering section committee engineer mrs kamala gunawardena for the word of thank over to you ma'am thank you bandhuka good evening everyone actually i have the pleasure of giving this sort of thanks uh, uh, for this uh, webinar on behalf of our civil engineering sectional committee um, this actually this event has been a very remarkable and very good learning experience for all of us uh, thanks to this exceptional contributions of our esteemed resource persons actually this has been dragging and postponing for some time so engineer malit mendis and engineer asanka laknath thank you so much for your contributions and your time taken for this a uh, nice presentation and uh, the kn knowledge you shared is immense so thank you so much i hope that this uh, knowledge area on post tension structures touched by the speakers uh, both of you uh, will be really helpful for practicing engineers those who are doing actually structures i'm a little bit away from structures but still i could understand how important it is so Uh, let us continue this uh, harness the knowledge gained today to further our expertise and contribute our our participants it will be a great help for us and to advancement of our civil engineering once again thank you engineer malik engineer laknath uh, for your immense contribution also actually i take this opportunity to thank our it team our isl secretariat uh, they are doing uh they are doing actually a great job to deliver all this uh, conduct all these webinars so thanks a lot for them and our publicity department also when we do canceling when we do <laughs> publishing so we are also excited so that's happening now uh, somehow so we uh, we look forward to more such uh, more such enriching experience in the future right so we will share all those things and Uh, finally our thank you so much for our participants who take your time and it's very interesting and you enjoyed i can see so you had a good time so thank you so much for your participation and uh i hope you all are at home or in stable place so have a good night and thank you so much thank you bandhu for taking your your own time to coordinate this sorry i couldn't thank you i want to thank you personally But I mean, only for you. Also, you you deserve a good thank you, right? Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone.